After the second episode of Grey's Anatomy Season 20, our roundtable debated several issues, including this one. A lonely Amelia floated around in an episode that didn't advance the plot much, but Lucas and Simone called it quits. What are your thoughts on this episode's scantily developed plot? Do you like the cases and character development focused episodes? Haley, it's interesting because I was thinking, wow, this episode is boring, while I watched it and mentally made notes for our round table. Come on, it's only a short season. Normally, I don't mind Grey's universe introducing episodes that don't feature any big dramatic moments. Deliver the stuff to us. Lucy, I tried to concentrate on the program while watching, but I started to nod off a little. My attention was not captured by this episode. It was also depressing. I almost cheered when Jules reprimanded the best family because it was so irritating, even though it was supposed to provide comedic relief. Everyone else appeared to be depressed. While episodes with little to no development don't bother me, they are typically more interesting, and this one wasn't. Jasmine, although I didn't think the episode was as horrible as you two did, I do agree that there were times when I felt like dozing off, and I believe that since the season is shorter, they should concentrate more on making the narrative interesting. Did Bailey treat the interns unfairly? Was Winston overstepping the mark, or did he make a valid point? As Ben mentioned, Miranda Bailey is not new to this. With success. Remarkably effective. Surgeons who won the Catherine Fox Award are her offspring. Doctors whose work is well-known worldwide. Ultimately, Winston needs to step aside and let her manage her interns the best way she knows how. Bailey's laxity with Meredith prevented her from reaching her current position. Lucy, is Winston having problems? He is always so incredibly irate. I agree with him that Bailey wasn't the best idea when it came to the bingo cards, but he could have approached her differently. Winston may have been a little more understanding, but she still needs to be the program head and approach these interns differently. Jasmine, Lucy and I both agree. Although I acknowledge that some of what he said was true, I didn't agree with the way he stated it. Winston has a sullen demeanor. Still, I adored Ben's encouragement of Bailey. She's still an amazing woman who coached the best, even at her lowest moments. She is a huge blessing to the newcomers. When helping with cases, which in turn caught your attention the most? Have you yet to name a favorite intern from this class? What do you think about their emphasis? Haley, I enjoy this class. Yasuda makes a great joke. I feel like Millen is a lot like Izzy Stevens. My two favorites from this set are the two of them. My favorite part was when Yasuda confronted Teddy, who was acting absurdly, doesn't medicine make the worst patients? I mentioned this briefly last week, but it's amazing these kids even got it through medical school given how careless they are at work. How can they possibly have time to consider getting into bed with each other when they work such a stressful job? Lucy, I enjoy this class as well, and everyone here is impressive, except for Simone. I didn't like how Lucas was acting again, and he was unable to demonstrate his surgical talents. As I already mentioned, I thought Millen was fantastic for pointing out the best family and for being proud of her MVP honor. It's interesting to watch her connect with different family types because of her dysfunctional family, and she frequently excels. It was great to see Yasuda stand up for herself once more. However, perhaps they might moderate it a little. It will become excessive if she continues to do it. Quan typically does well with family members, and even though I dislike it when he steals cases or items, like the money bag, he did a great job of healing when he asked to massage the man's heart for practice after he passed away. Jasmine, it's hilarious, Haley since I was just discussing how much the new magic. It's like the originals on Twitter with another fan, and Jules does give me Izzy vibes. Lucas reminds me of George, and I find myself switching between Yasuda and Quan, with Quan reminding me of Yang and Alex on any given day. Quan stood out to me during this installment, which is why I adored him. He always does such a tremendous job working with the families of his patients, it's when we get to see the best of him, and this time was no exception. They all have so much promise, and I adore them all so much. In the end, Simone acknowledged that she should put more of her attention on taking care of herself than on Lucas. 
At last, Lucas confronted her for putting her own needs ahead of his emotions. What do you think about this decision, their debate, and the ship's potential? Haley, here, they are both correct. She's not in the appropriate frame of mind for a relationship, Simone is right. Her entire circumstance is causing her to be careless at work. Lucas is correct, though, when he claims that Simone has repeatedly ignored him and left him hanging. He abruptly and dramatically informed her that their love relationship was gone, but I don't think that for a second. Before the season is up, they'll undoubtedly find themselves back in an on-call room. Lucy, oh no. Of course, Simone needs time. Come on, though, after telling Lucas she needs distance and requiring him to feel better. That's not how you play with my Lucas. He was quite correct to set her straight. Her incessant flitting interferes with his ability to concentrate, something he also needs. She needs to clear her mental state. The patient appeared fine once she admitted her error and expressed regret. Besides, he suspected, given the omitted calls to the health department, that his outburst at her was motivated more by himself than by her. If they can avoid each other and get their concentration back, there is hope for them. Jasmine, oh, my darling summertime offspring. Both alone and collectively, I adore these characters. But aren't they bringing all the drama and shenanigans? Here they both were. Simone needs time to sort things out and perhaps engage in some introspection, she's not ready to be with someone just yet. She has a lot going on, so it would be interesting to see more of her accepting certain aspects of who she is. Simone, I steer clear of harsh reality. When they are staring me in the face, I stay away from them. I took off from Baltimore. I ran from you, from my wedding, from everything with Sam. And I believe the reason is that I'm too afraid to acknowledge that this is not the proper moment for us. I'm falling asleep, I'm not sleeping. I'm causing harm to others. I have to prioritize myself since I'm injuring myself. My career must come first. Lucas, since when have you not? She's not wrong to need that time, in my opinion because I know that it will only make her and them better in the end. Though it was motivated by something else, I felt proud of Lucas for telling her the truth. From where he stands, she has taken him and his affection for her for granted. It hasn't been fair to him at all. That concludes our exploration of Grey's Anatomy Roundtable Theory. Please remember to hit the like button, subscribe for the next film theories, and leave your comments below if you like this theory and would like to see more movie theories. Thanks for watching.